Happy day and welcome everybody. So what we're going to be talking about today is limiting reagents, a little bit about excess reagents, not really much, theoretical yield, and the last thing is what is called percent yield. Okay, all right. So let's get started everybody. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take you through, walk you through something you already know, grilled cheese sandwiches. Who doesn't love a grilled cheese sandwich, right? They're pretty easy to make. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of scenarios of cheese and bread and you're going to tell me how many sandwiches you can make. It's pretty easy, okay? So I'm going to start off, and I'm going to do four pieces of bread, and I'm going to do two pieces of cheese. And on the count of three, we're going to check it in a second. How many sandwiches can I make, everybody? One, two, three, go! Two. two sandwiches. So you are very fast with this. You can definitely make two sandwiches with this, all right? Okay, so let's try another one. Let's say that I have something like six pieces of bread, and I have three pieces of cheese. Uh, no, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's make this eight and four. Ready? On the count of three, how many sandwiches can I make? One. So it's eight pieces of bread and four pieces of cheese. One, two, three, go. Four. Four. That's pretty easy, right? If I don't have anything extra and they're both getting used up equally, it makes it pretty easy. I know exactly how much I'm going to make. And not only that, I could either use the bread to tell me how many sandwiches I'm going to make, or I could use the cheese to tell me how many sandwiches I can make. And in chemistry, that happens often, where I would say, I don't really care how much cheese you have, I'm just gonna tell you how much bread you have, and you tell me how many sandwiches you can make. Or, let's say you go backwards. If I told you that you were going to be making four sandwiches, and I said, how many pieces of bread do you need to start with in order to make four sandwiches, you all know. How many pieces of bread do you need? You need eight, okay? And so we know that we can also work backwards, right? And that's the whole idea of stoichiometry. Because we know stoichiometry is figuring out the amount of one substance when you know the amount of another. And that's exactly what we're talking about here, okay? But now watch what this twist is with limiting and excess reagents, okay? Anybody want to guess at, as to what you think is going to happen? If I say that there's an excess reagent, what do you think that's going to be? Extra, very good. Everybody say excess, extra. Excess extra. What do you think the limiting reagent is going to be? Not enough. Not enough. You run out of it. Okay? And it's not even like not enough as much as it is. That's the one that's going to limit how much you make. So let me give you an example here. So let's reset. And let's say that I have four pieces of bread and I have six. I have six pieces of cheese. Okay? On the count of three. Oh, can you see this yet? On the count of three, how many sandwiches can I make? One, two, three, go! Two. two. But if I have six pieces of cheese, how many sandwiches should I have made? Six. six. What you just did in your head, your brilliant mind, okay, which a younger kid, like in elementary school, wouldn't be able to do this, is you said four pieces of bread can give me how many sandwiches? Two. And six pieces of cheese should be able to give me six but you don't actually make six, that's too many. In your mind, you crossed off the six and you boxed in the two sandwiches and then your two sandwiches are what you call your, that's what is called the theoretical yield. Everybody say it, theoretical yield. That's in theory how many sandwiches you can make. Somebody tell me, if you have four pieces of bread and then you've got six pieces of cheese, what could go wrong that you didn't make two sandwiches and maybe you only end up with one sandwich? What could go wrong? You could burn the bread. You burn the bread, that needs to go in the garbage, now you only have one. Maybe you notice, you open up the bread and you notice what when you open up the package? Maybe one of the pieces of bread is molded. Now you only have three, well you can only make one sandwich if you have three pieces of bread still, okay? Maybe you drop it on the floor, okay? Or something like that. So there are gonna be situations that you might have. Right, okay. we call this our theoretical yield, and since the cheese is extra, we call it the excess reagent. Everybody say excess reagent. Excess, excess reagent. reagent. Now, when we say reagent, we're talking about one of the reactants, and the reactants are what you start with before the arrow, and the product is obviously what you're producing, okay? All right, let's do one more, and then we're going to go to, um, we're going to go to the notes. We're going to go to filling out the notes. Okay, so let's say I have eight of these, and I have five of these, okay? 
So, oh, I meant to do this again, right? So again, um, how many sandwiches could we make in this situation? One, two, three, go. Four. four. We can make four sandwiches. A couple of things that I want you to notice. So what is limiting how many sandwiches we're making? What is our limiting reagent in this? The bread. The bread is limiting it because if I went along the cheese, then I should be able to make five sandwiches. So what I want you to notice is I have less cheese. So people will say, well, isn't the limiting reagent the one you have less of? No. The limiting reagent is the one that causes me to produce less. Okay. So after I figure out my theoretical yield, the one that gave me my theoretical yield is actually going to be my limiting reagent. Okay. And it has to be a reactant. It has to be either the cheese or the bread. You're not going to say my limiting reagent is the number of sandwiches. That's your product. Okay. That's your, that's how much you produce. Okay. And then one more thing I wanted to show you. So the last thing is it's going to ask you what's your theoretical yield. So for example, in this situation, this would be what I'm going to call my theoretical yield. And then it's going to ask you which one's your limiting reagent or your excess reagent. Well, the limiting one is the one that made me have only four sandwiches, right? Otherwise I could have had five. So the limiting reagent in this situation would be my bread. So I would call that my limiting, I'm just going to abbreviate it, reagent. So that means that this one's going to be my excess reagent. And the last question you're going to be asked, it's going to be three questions that are going to go with each of the problems. The last thing you're going to ask is called, be asked is called, what is your percent yield? Okay, what's your percent yield? And it's pretty easy. Everybody say ET phone home. We're going to do this a couple times. Say ET phone home. ET phone home. ET is a movie. If you've never seen it, extraterrestrial. Um, I'll show you a picture of what ET looks like in the notes. But what we're going to do is we're going to do E over T times 100. Don't worry about writing anything down right now. Okay. What you do is you take your experimental value, which is if I did this in the experiment, or experimental is like your actual. So if I'm really at home and I go to make these sandwiches, what happens, okay? So my experimental, let's say that I didn't actually make four sandwiches. Why? Let's say that two of the pieces of toast burned, okay, or whatever it was, they burned somehow, right? Instead, I was only able to make three sandwiches. So if I only made three sandwiches, that's called my experimental. How many was I supposed to make? T is for theoretical. How many was I supposed to make? Four sandwiches is what I was supposed to make. And then all you're going to do is multiply by 100. And so 3 divided by 4 is 0.75. If I multiply by 100, I'm going to get 75% yield. Percent yield is really important if you're trying to manufacture and make money on something or maybe a drug that you're trying to make. So depending on what your percent yield is, you can say, I started off with this much of both reactants, but I only, and I, I thought I was going to make X number of grams of, let's say, Tylenol, but instead of making five grams, I only made 4.5. Why? What happened? What are some things that could have happened, right? So somehow I only made 4.5 grams. Your percent yield is the stuff that's actually going to go out, okay, to everybody. So um, that's the way that this is going to work. All right, so let's take a look at the notes. Let's go ahead and fill in the notes. This is going to go pretty fast here. So we've got a grilled cheese party. What did we say stoichiometry is? I'm using a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a difference in the words here. So just changing up the words a little bit. So it says it's the use of a balanced chemical equation to determine the quantity of one substance. Instead of saying we were saying amount of one substance, now we're saying quantity of one substance when you know the quantity of another when you know the quantity of another okay we're going to continue using stoichiometry although now instead of just knowing how much of one of the reactants you have we're going to know two of them but i'm going to show you how much easier this is going to be for you okay so even though i'm going to take you through all the steps of understanding it the problems are going to be super, super easy, okay? So the limiting reagent, we said, is the one that you what? The limiting one is the one you, you run out of it, right? So that you run out of. And then it, um, I'm going to put a star here, and I'm going to say it limits how much product you make. It limits product made. It limits how much product you're going to make. 
So what do we call the excess one? The excess one is the one that you have extra of, you have left over, that you have left over. Okay, so this one you have left over in the end. All right, our grilled cheese sandwich, really basic. We're gonna say one piece of cheese, two pieces of bread to make how many sandwiches? One, perfect, okay. It's party time. You go to Costco, you buy one of those 100 singles of American cheese. So the party's hopping and people are ready for what they came for, the grilled cheese sandwiches. They really came for me, but we're just gonna say they came for the grilled cheese sandwiches. So you're gonna get it started and you notice that you forgot to buy loaves of bread. You only have a pack of bread with six slices of bread. How many grilled cheese sandwiches can you make if you have 100 pieces of cheese and six pieces of bread? One, two, three, go. Three. This is incredible because again, I wanna tell you what your brain just did. In seconds, in seconds, you are able to take your 100 pieces of cheese, figure out how many sandwiches you can make according to saying one piece of cheese for every sandwich, right? So you figured out the ratio in your head. Then you said six pieces of bread, there's two pieces of bread for every sandwich, and you told me that that would make three sandwiches. Since three, how many sandwiches could you make with 100 pieces of cheese? 100. In your brain, you crossed it off. It doesn't make any sense. You're not gonna make 100 sandwiches because you don't have enough bread, okay? So you literally cross it off. It says, in a sense, 100 moles of cheese reacts with six moles of bread. So again, if we call this moles, because our coefficients, let's write this over here, our coefficients equal moles. So if they ever say, um, uh, how many moles are, uh, what's your ratio of moles of bread to cheese, for example, you just use your coefficients to figure out the ratio. So what do we say is the limiting reagent in this one? What's limiting how much we're making? The bread or the cheese? The bread. Okay, and a lot of times I'll say how much of the bread, so it's six pieces of bread that's limiting it. Okay, even though you were able to quickly figure this out in your head, we're gonna show what the act actual calculations are on paper, and again, what we're gonna call this is a limiting reagent problem. So this is gonna be more work than you're even gonna do. In your problems okay so I need I'm gonna do two bridges why because I'm actually starting off with two things I'm starting with a hundred pieces of, um, of cheese and six pieces of bread okay so circle what you want what are we looking for in quite in this question sandwiches awesome we're looking for sandwiches how many sandwiches write what you've got so we're gonna write two things so just space it out a little bit so over here I'm gonna do a hundred and it is supposed to be like moles, so I'm going to write M-O-L, cheese, I'm going to abbreviate it, M-O-L, cheese, throw in a bridge, cross your units opposite, M-O-L, cheese. Okay, what are we trying to find? This is what goes on top. What are we trying to find? The sandwiches. I'm just going to write S-A-N-D for sandwiches, so let's just write sand right there. Okay, let's take a look at our balanced equation. You already know it anyway, but according to our balanced equation, what's my ratio of sandwiches to cheese? One, two, three, go. One to one. So cheese, sandwiches to cheese, we know is one to one. So if I multiply and divide, remember we ignore the ones, we're just gonna get 100 sandwiches. Do not box this in, don't circle it, just leave it for a second, okay? Now what I want you to do is we're gonna do this six moles of bread. So now we have our six moles of bread. Throw in a bridge, cross our units opposite, moles of bread. Okay, again, we're still looking for sandwiches. So I'm gonna write moles of sandwiches on top here. On the count of three, what's my ratio of sandwiches to bread? Ready? One, two, three, go. One over two, very good. One sandwich is two pieces of bread. So now when you do the math, ignore the one, what do you do in your calculator? Six divided by two, which is three. Okay, one of the answers you crossed off in your head. Which one doesn't make any sense? The hundred. And it's literally, if somebody asks you why, it's because it's too big, okay? The amount that you're going to make is going to be the smaller one. We're going to box this in, and I want you to point an arrow to it. Anybody want to guess what this is called? It's a long word, 
and it ends with the second word is yield. The first word is theoretical. In theory, this is how many sandwiches we should make if nothing happens to the bread or the cheese. So this is called the theoretical yield. Everybody write that down. That's called the theoretical yield. Okay, the limiting reagent is always the reactant that gave you the theoretical yield. So these two are gonna go together. This doesn't have a name. This has no name. This would be called, anybody wanna guess? If that's your limiting reagent, this one's probably called the excess reagent. That's the one that's extra, that you have extra of. So this right here, point an arrow to this one, and I want you to write lim, we're just gonna abbreviate it. Limiting reagent is that one right there. Okay, so we have our theoretical yield and our limiting reagent, they're in the same bridge, all right? Both of them are gonna be in the same bridge. Okay, and then the last thing we talked about, and then we're gonna look at the chemistry way of doing this, is uh, we already talked about this. We said the theoretical yield is how much should be produced in an ideal situation. Ideal means perfect, okay? Nothing goes wrong, that's ideal. If none of the slices of bread are molded, none of them burn, none of them fall on the floor, the experimental or actual yield is how much you made in your experiment. So this is our ET guy, so he says ET phone home. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write our equation down. So everybody just write E over T times 100. And it says you only ended up making two sandwiches for whatever reason, you only ended up making two sandwiches. What's our percent yield? Okay, what's E in this situation? What did we actually make? Two. Two sandwiches is what we actually made. Divided by your theoretical, how many should we have made? Three. We should have made three sandwiches if everything was perfect. Don't forget, that's a fraction. We don't want a fraction, we want to turn it into a percent. So what do we multiply by? A hundred. And so two divided by three, go ahead and plug it into your calculator. And we want three digits. Remember, we always want, we want to try to round and get three digits. Times a hundred. What do we get? 66 point, like 666 repeating. So we're gonna say 66.7% yield. Okay, so that's gonna be what our percent yield is. All right, chemistry way. Way, way, way faster. Here's why. The physical science teachers decided that we were going to give you the problems already solved, the stoichiometry already solved, all you have to do is you have to cross one off, box one in, and then you have to be able to tell what's the limiting reagent and calculate a theoretical or a percent yield, okay? So let's go for it. On the count of three, let's see if you can get this right. It says nitrogen monoxide combines. In the lab, we have 45 grams of NO and 45 grams of O2, and they're asking us how much of the NO2 are we going to make theoretically? So it says, how many grams of NO2 would theoretically be produced? You have two answers. On the count of three, one of them doesn't make any sense. We're gonna cross it off. I want you to think about which one you crossed off here. Which one did we cross off? The 100, why did we cross off the 100? It was too big. There's no way, we can't make that many sandwiches because the bread only gives us three, right? So cross off the one that's bigger, ready? It's literally that easy. On the count of three, which one are we crossing off? 69 or 129? One, two, three, go. 129, cross it off. Box this one in, okay? Point an arrow to this one. Let me know, what do you think that one's called? Everybody, it's called the what? Theoretical yield, you guys say it. Say theoretical yield. Theoretical, theoretical yield. yield. This is called the theoretical yield. I'm just gonna abbreviate it again. What is the one that gave you the theoretical yield called? This is called your, this one? Limiting reagent, very good. This one is called your limiting reagent, okay? And that's it, this, is, this has no name. This one would be your excess reagent. We don't know how much is an excess because obviously these have to combine with each other. It's like the bread and the cheese. So you would have to figure, subtract to figure out how much of it actually is left over, okay? Okay, so let's answer the questions. So the first one is, how many grams of NO2 would theoretically be produced? Ready, three, two, one, go. 
69.0, very good, 69.0 grams of NO2. What we think is the limiting reagent then? We already marked it, one, two, three, go. Okay, but if you say 45, notice they're both 45. So which one is it? The NO. So I do like to write 45 grams of NO. That way it also doesn't look like you're just writing the word no, right? So it's 45.0 grams of the NO, that's our limiting reagent. It says if you actually made 56.2, what's the percent yield? What's our equation for percent yield? Everybody, who phone home? ET. E Everybody write E over T times 100. Write that first. Okay, what's our E in this situation? What's our experimental or actual value? The 56.2, so then what's our theoretical? The 69, perfect. So we're gonna do 56.2 grams divided by the 69.0 grams times 100. If you can tell me what you get when you divide this, please. 81.4, awesome. 81.4% yield. Okay, awesome. So I'm not kidding. The problems are going to be this easy. You're gonna cross off the one that's big, box in the one that is the smaller one, and then your limiting reagent and your theoretical yield go together. Keep that in mind, okay? So whichever one is your theoretical yield, your limiting reagent is the one that goes with that. And then we just use E over T to figure out um, our percent yields, okay? Hope that was good and happy day, everybody.